Dustin, keep some speed, huh? <laughs> Windmill does not mean it will produce wind, okay? Don't get it wrong. Back to old ways. <laughs> Full night riding. It's saying hello to me. Hello. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, been a risky ride today. <laughs> Here we are at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and the museum also along with that. Oh, oh he's reading Aesop's fables. Yeah, <laughs> Aesop was one of my favorites. This is it. I know. From the history books <laughs> that most children get exposed to almost everywhere in the world about his life, a simple statement is he abolished uh, slavery. Yes, it is true, but it was not just like a simple law to be passed. It was an existential question for the nation that we today call as United States that with that so-called 13th Amendment, uh, the United States as a nation could have ended. All this effort and this risk to be able to take that, there is a vision beyond logical calculations that everybody makes. There is a vision to see the world the way it will be. This vision drove the man to take such a risk of killing 600,000 of your own citizens, burn down the nation, but from those ashes rose a great nation. Well, uh, this is something that most people wouldn't know, wouldn't know looking at his shoulders and his very skinny look, but he was a, quite a consummate wrestler. I think what he wrestled is not man, what he wrestled is the destiny of not only this nation of the world because he managed to see how the world will be in future. And that's a risk he took, that is civil war and uh, well, man oh man, no question because fundamental cause in this whole effort is humanity. Here we are on top of uh, Starved Rock, there is a legend, a Native American legend that the chief Pontiac of the Ottawa tribe was killed by the Illinois tribes, assassinated somewhere south in southern Illinois.
in revenge, uh, they chased this band of braves or young men and they came and holed up on this rock. I don't know for how long, but that entire band died here on top of this rock, starving. So, it has this name as Stout Rock. Where do you do the tomorrow session? We are looking at a place in uh, Rockford. Great lake would be fantastic, no? Yeah, but by the time we reach, it's dark, Sadhguru. Yeah, but tomorrow morning when you do the satsang, you're on the Great oh, okay. Lake. Okay. No, lake is another three hours. Okay. But what's that like? We can do it. Huh? Three years we can do it. Right three hours? I just wrote a poem for you today. It's called Be or Busy. Listen to this carefully because of very few words. Be or Busy. My deepest song has not been sung yet. Still in wait for din to settle and silence to blossom. When I sing that song, will you be? are busy. So, uh, we've been on this trip. I think my meter is reading somewhere over twenty-five hundred miles totally. <laughs> so, we've been riding. So, living on the road and going on like this, why? Because here, in this country, in this land, there has been a certain form of spirituality, occult and mysticism, which is completely unsophisticated, which is simple, earthy, but wonderful in its own way. This could happen to you if you just sit here. Suppose you're not a busy person, you know, I mean, you're not busy. You simply sat here for days on end, months on end, simply looking at this water. If you don't do anything, simply staring, things will happen to you. Not because of the water, not because of the land, not because of anything around you, simply because human attention can do that. If you simply pay attention without purpose, things will open up. Because they were a oral culture and uh, the culture got rather quickly wiped out, they did not leave enough footprint. Nobody wrote about it, nobody really enshrined it in any way, so it's only blowing in the wind. <laughs> so we're riding, trying to catch that wind. Starting is removed. The line here is removed. The next one is going to be one long ride, all the way to Black Hills. On the way, there's a very unique uh, mound system called Effigy Mounds. Mm. They're in the form of uh, birds and animals. This is one long ride, mm, probably by the scale of things, uh, must be about thirteen hundred miles. Or 
writing. <laughs> Keep some speed, huh? <laughs> Windmill does not mean it will produce wind, okay? Don't get it wrong. So here we are at the effigy mounds, very unique uh, archaeological remains. Uh, all the other mounds are geometrical, it's only here that mounds are in the form of uh, birds and animals and also human forms. It is used for spiritual purposes. They are also used as burials because some of the mounds hold uh, remains of the bodies. But we are here, walking on this land which was sacred to them with utmost respect because it is important that human spirit is more, is of a higher value than what we build for utility or conquests or other things. So these are relics of that dimension of their life. <laughs> Full night riding. The word Tsu means uh, friend or ally, <laughs> but uh, there is also a description of being considered uh, an enemy by other people. It is also called a group of seven hearts where the seven very strong tribes came together. And in many ways, in Northern America, they became the longest and the strongest resistance to white, white settlers for a long time. But as the settlers pushed in, they went more towards the, their source. What they considered as their source is the Black Hills. They believe they came out of the Black Hills. So they started moving more and more towards that. Their final resistance came in the form of what is today known as the Ghost Dance. Ghost Dance was a movement of wanting to raise the spirits of their ancestors because certain leaders believed that by raising the ancestral spirits, they can fight 
the invaders and push them back. Well, that also ended in uh, late uh, 1800s, but we will be going west towards Black Hills in the next couple of days and we will be exploring this possibility. Right now, Sioux Falls, for you, right here. So beautifully made, rough. This is American buffalo. This used to be, in many ways, uh, it's the buffalo migrations which determined the Lakota life. And it's also the decimation of buffalo in the American plains which also decimated the Indians because this was their main food and they hunted in a very calibrated way. The Indians associate all kinds of mystical and magical powers associated with him, but uh, he is quite a magic as he is. <laughs> the expression of the buffalo always, you know, like dull, uninterested kind of look on his face <laughs> Saying hello to me. Hello. As you can see, uh, from lush green Midwest, of course, clumps of trees, but. Uh, definitely a dry grassland kind of look as we are riding towards South Dakota. There are some sculptures of a very large-sized horse and uh, a longhorn, I think, uh, cattle, beautiful on the highway side, but we are not stopping here. We appreciate pottery today. Beautiful dry rolling hills with uh, green vegetation only in the crevices of the hills. Now we are going towards Black Hills, another 200 miles. We'll get there by today evening. It's already 5 p.m. Ah, uh, 200 miles. <laughs> Fabulous open country. Speed limit has been raised to 80 here. Ah. You guys go there, fill up and come, we'll watch the sunset, okay? Jaya Jaya Jaya
never brought my harmony. Wow. At one time, it is said, it's hard to imagine, it seems there were over twenty million buffalo ranging around in the plains of America. But they were almost reduced to a few hundred thousand and now they're being managed at a certain level. And killing of the buffalo was a part of the strategy to starve the Lakota nation and it worked unfortunately. The bisons, what you call them buffalo, so. Riding through 50 miles wind strength, <laughs> not a great day for motorcycling. Right now, when the things are good, where are we going? To the Vale for Gruvier Ellie. In honor of the great uh, Lakota warrior, Crazy Horse. Okay, I see it. I see the lake. Just five months. Okay. Okay. Okay, bye. Been a risky ride today, huh? <laughs> been a bit of a risk riding through this fifty mile gust winds. Fifty mile is a wind, the gust must be around sixty-five. Literally throwing the motorcycle off the road. But here we are in one piece. very sacred land for the Lakota people. It's uh, our privilege that we are allowed to stay here on this land tonight. And we will also do our darshan tomorrow morning on this sacred Lakota land which is the Bear Butte. And 
Devil's Tower as it's known, but it's Black Hills essentially. Lakota people believe that they came out of Black Hills.